Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Rockat Torch. Now, this is an interesting USB microphone with a number of highlights to it, not least of which is that RGB lighting that you'll see on the box and shown off later on, but also a number of other things. For example, it has multiple mounting options. It comes with its own little base with multiple controls in it. It has an integrated pop filter and a action-based mute system or a mute button. So you actually have two options for muting it. It also has some setup options in terms of either mounting it on a boom arm or keeping it on its stand. And I believe that this microphone is designed for streamers because it has the RGB lighting on it which means that you can obviously show it off on stream. But it's also useful because the RGB changes in its size depending on how much gain you've got the microphone set to, which is curiosity, and actually changes color depending on what capture mode you're in as well. And it'll even light up to let you know when it's recording so that you know what's happening, which is a fascinating setup. And I'll show you a bit more of what I mean on that later on. But just for your own reference, I'm using the microphone now to capture the voiceover for this video. And I'm doing so with it on a boom arm close to my mouth because that's obviously the best position to capture the best audio with any microphone. And this one goes nice and close to your face. Now inside the box, you'll see it has multiple different cables included. You have three different USB cables. There's a tiny little USB-C cable that connects from the microphone to its stand. And then there's a slightly longer one that connects from the stand to your PC. That's the standard setup, but you can then take it off the stand if you so wish and use the longer USB-C cable to connect from the base station to the microphone on the boom arm and then to your PC from the base station. You need to keep with the little base station connected at all times because this does the volume control, the gain control and the other things. The gain slider is on the right hand side, that adjusts the level and matches within Windows to give you the maximum levels up and down. The volume slider is actually for the pass through to the 3.5mm connection on the rear, so to get your audio from your game, for example, into your headset. So you can plug a 3.5mm headset into the back of it and then you can listen to the audio that way. You'll also notice at the back there's a button that allows you to turn the lighting on and off and adjust the brightness of it as well, so you can customise that, change the brightness to your own personal preference you might not want that RGB for example and you will notice on the very top there's the little capacitive mute thing that I was talking about basically you have to do a little swipe action over the top of that I'll show you that later on but that's curiosity because the volume wheel also pushes into mute so there's a number of interesting highlights immediately when you get it out of the box and it does look like a nice premium microphone it's a chunky thing though as you will see it is quite large and in your face and I don't think that's a bad thing because it means the internals are probably well designed and well built. And as you can hear, it picks up a really good sound quality as well. And I'll show you more of that as well as a test for how much background noise it picks up in a minute. But what you'll see is it's also really easy to take off the stand if you want. And I'd highly recommend doing this and picking up a good boom arm to get it close to your face. Obviously, if you're streaming and you want to show it off, then it's better in this position anyway. But putting it on a stand with any microphone... If you've got it on your desk, it's going to pick up keyboard noise. And I'll demonstrate a difference between the both as well, so stick with me for that in a second. But here I'm mounting it on Elgato's mic arm, and later on I'll show you it on the Rode PSA1 as well. So you can basically mount it on any boom arm. Just bear in mind the weight of the microphone, because different boom arms can hold different weights. And there is a little adjustment thread thing as well sometimes that you might need, that you usually find included but I'll leave all the specs in the description, as well as a link to Rockat's FAQ, so you can find out more if you have questions about the microphone. If you get it and you have any problems with it, they've got a really in-depth FAQ on it. But you'll see that the process for sticking it on a boom arm is really straightforward and simple. Now, one of the things I don't like about this microphone that I'll let you know immediately is the 3.5mm connection on the base does not give you mic monitoring. So I'm talking to you now and I can't hear my own voice through the headphones, which is a weird thing indeed. Usually if you plug into a microphone, you can then mic monitor with your headset, and that's usually the logic of the 3.5mm. But for some reason with the torch, that's not the case. Very strange. You do have a volume adjustment, as I said, on the bass, so you can turn the volume up, and that turns up the volume in Windows, so you can basically adjust the volume of your music or whatever else, for example, but it doesn't affect the, what you're hearing in terms of what you're getting from the microphone. And the gain, obviously, is the amount of level that the mic is picking up 
On the left hand side you'll see there's a polar pattern adjustment. Now the far left is stereo, the middle is cardioid, which is the one you want when you're talking into the front of the microphone, and then you have a whisper mode, which is designed to basically let you talk more quietly, and it's designed for use at night, they say, but it's also, I think, for ASMR streamers, people that want to talk really quietly to their stream, and it'll still pick up the sound, but not do it in an offensive way, and I'll show you some of that later on. I'm not really one of those people, but I can demonstrate what it's like and the possibilities of it. The stereo pickup pattern is also very interesting and I'll demonstrate what I mean there as well. So this is the initial setup and what it's like out of the box. I was interested immediately by the look and feel of it. It's quite different to a lot of other mics I've tried, which are generally just black and either plastic or metal and not particularly fancy. This one looks the business by comparison. It also sounds great as you can hear. Now here we are with the microphone mounted on the boom arm. Now, obviously some of the RGB is hidden and I'll demonstrate the other RGB, but what you can see here is that even from behind, it's possible to witness the lighting. So this level here, that you can see going up the side actually adjusts depending on the gain level. So if I turn the gain up, and back down again, I found, I found about here is the sweet spot for me, maybe a little bit higher, that you can see that that changes. So you can actually see on the fly how much gain you've got, which is pretty nice. So this is like a percentage, when obviously when it's full, it's the 100%. It's an interesting quirk of the system. One of the other things is it also changes color. So this is green at the moment to indicate that it's in cardioid pickup pattern, which means I'm talking straight at it, and then you can get that. The mute thing will demonstrate as well. This obviously is where you get the best quality, and in a minute I'll show you what it would be like capturing on the desk, but the problem we always have there is trying to capture audio without picking up other background sounds. And talking of background sounds, I'll just type in the background now so you can hear what that's like. I've got quite a quiet keyboard. It's Logitech G915 TKL. It's not terribly offensive. I can see that the microphone's picking it up though. One option there is to reduce the gain a little bit and then get closer to it. And that's always a good way to cut down on such things, to turn the gain down get a little bit closer and then carry on typing. And I'll show you a trick for sorting that out as well in a minute and working with how to work out what sort of level of gains you want to use on this. Now the RGB lighting is controllable with neon and I'll show you that in a minute as well. It's very limited in terms of what it can do. So now what I want to do is go into the polar patterns because I think that's worth discussing. So this is of this standard cardioid one and all I need to do is twist a dial on the left hand side of that stand to change. So I'm going to change first into whisper. So this is the whisper mode and then you can basically start talking really quietly and it'll still pick up what you're saying. My friend Sir Henry Deadman would hate this because he doesn't like ASMR. But if you're really into this sort of thing then this might be the microphone for you because you can talk really quietly into it and it picks up a very nice quality, perfect for ASMR streaming. Some people might really like me talking like this as well. The one that I find interesting though is the stereo mode. So stereo is designed for picking up from multiple sources. So for example, if you had someone on the other side of you talking, or you wanted to pick up sort of surrounding noise. Generally speaking, if you're using it like I would be, you wouldn't want that stereo mode. You want it in cardioid pickup patterns so you can talk to the microphone and eliminate some of the other noise around you, fan noise and things like that. So this is the better pickup pattern. However, what is interesting is that in stereo mode, when I turn it over, you'll notice a difference that it actually changes ears in terms of where it's coming from. So if I click it over now, and then I'm talking on the left hand side of it. So I'm over here talking on the left, and then I'm talking to the middle. And now I'm on the right, and then I'm back in the middle again. And then a little bit over to the left. I'm over here on the left, and then I'm in the middle. 
and then over on the right and that is quite interesting i think and a unique thing and you could use that in interesting ways i do believe so i'm actually really impressed with this microphone for a number of different reasons it's surprisingly good for the amount of money you're paying. It gives good capture quality. I really hate the fact that I can't hear myself talking to you. I've got this headset on and I'm thinking maybe I should just take one ear off so I can actually hear myself a bit better. You should generally be able to plug in a, a headset to a 3.5mm connection on a microphone and be able to hear yourself, but you just can't with this and that seems like an oversight. However, you have a lot more controls and things than you would normally. And so that gives you a lot of flexibility. Now I'm going to show you what it's like on a stand instead. So now it's on the desk, obviously quite a bit away from me. Quite a bit of a distance away from my mouth instead of being very close. And I've had it set at the same gain level. I think you'll probably still be able to hear me. I might have to crank those levels up a bit. What I'm going to do now is just type on the keyboard again. Obviously it's a bit closer, so it's probably going to be a lot it's picking up a lot more sound. I can see that with an OBS, so it's obviously not ideal being here. And if you're frantically gaming away and also clicking your mouse, it's going to be picking up a lot of that noise. So really having it on the desk is not ideal. One of the nice things about the desk stand, though, is it's on a ball head, so you can tilt and maneuver it around. So I picked up the mic here to demonstrate how you can move it around, but don't do that because it just ended up being a bang and a donk and a twong as I moved it about. But I put it into stereo mode so that you could hear hear while talking behind it and that does work but you really do hear the thumps when you start moving around like this so don't move it around as i'm doing but you can see that it moves back and forth it tilts back and forth on there it doesn't really go to side to side unless you loosen it up and obviously you also have to be careful not to accidentally mute it with that special muting thing on top but you can see that the desk mount is pretty interesting but still really it's better to get it on a boom arm if you can. So one of the things I wanted to demonstrate is the setup in OBS or at least how to know about the gain level. So if you've got this microphone and you're worried it's picking up too much background noise you can actually see this basically immediately with a really easy look into OBS and this might be useful. So on the right hand side I've got Streamlabs OBS I'm just showing you where the microphone settings are. So obviously in audio settings we need to go down into here. You set your microphone as Torch Streaming Microphone, and then your desktop would be also Torch Streaming Microphone. So you set both of those in there, and then make sure they're also set in Windows to be the same thing. Now, you can see the movement of the bar down here, obviously, and you also see the level of gain that I've currently got it on, on here without even looking in Windows. If I turn the gain up and stop talking, you'll see that sound is being picked up by Streamlabs OBS. So what we can do now is drop the gain down until that bar stops showing up. And now you can see about here, the bar isn't moving at all when I'm not talking. And then you can apply the same sort of logic by also carrying on typing, perhaps. And now you can see that that has disappeared as well. Obviously, I'm a bit quieter. I have to talk a bit louder or I have to get a bit closer. But that knocks out some of the background noise. That's a quick and easy tip for reducing background noise. There are other ways to deal with it and to improve the mic quality. And I've gone into this on previous videos on other microphones, so I'll link to that in the description. You can use NVIDIA RTX Voice, for example, or Crisp AI in Discord. And you can also apply filters in OBS. But it's just a simple adjustment of the gain can make all the difference. And the fact that this shows you the gain level where you're at, you'll know immediately if you've got it in the wrong spot and you need to adjust it on the fly just by looking at the microphone, which I think is a really nice touch. Now I've got the mic facing the wrong way, facing you so that you can see the RGB light and you'll see the Rockout logos lit up. But also when you wave your hand over the top, that's when it goes into that mute mode and you'll notice the entire thing goes red. So this lets you know that it's muted. The other interesting highlight as well is that if you're not recording the RGB strips down the side that show you the gain levels, 
are also not lit up and there's a little indicator on the base station that says live when it's live and recording so if it's being used in OBS or Audacity or whatever other tool you're using and you're actually live and recording you'll see a visual cue to let you know besides from the red mute indicator you can also tell whether it's actually even being used which is an interesting point now you can swipe your hand over the mute button to mute it and put it into that red mode and you can actually touch it as well though doing so obviously the mic picks that up you can also push the volume wheel down and that will mute you'll also see the different colors from when you're in the different polar patterns the one final thing that's left to show you is rocket neon which you can see is a very simple software you basically just click on the torch and then you have the option to change the lighting and you can turn the lighting off or you can turn it on and it's AMO intelligent lighting so basically the rocket logo will change color over time and react to your environment to be honest I don't even think this is worth downloading at this point and it doesn't add a great deal to the microphone you can see that you can't really control anything else with it but it is worth considering this has been the provoke prawn hope you found this useful give it a thumbs up if you did hit that subscribe button and come back for more in future thanks for watching this has been the provoke prawn hope you found this video useful interesting hilarious or otherwise take a look at these other videos that i think you might find interesting as well and have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my youtube channel and most importantly have a great life